So I'm Graham Morley. Uh, it's nice to be with you to talk to you um, from South Staffordshire College. Uh, <clears throat> what I was asked by Dynastic to talk to you about is you know, a little bit about the college to provide the context in which we use dashboard technology, uh, why, we, why we use it at all, wh what's in it for us, uh, obviously a little bit about Dynastics, uh, how we've gone about implementing it and what we how we're using it and what we think the benefits to our business are. So I'm a Hopefully, we'll rattle through those. A little bit about South Staffordshire College. Some of you may remember this if you are avid readers of the Times Ed or, or relatively local, but uh, prior to January the 1st, 2009, in those heady days when the LSC was giving us all sorts of capital money, uh, <coughs> three colleges decided to come together, those being Ch uh, Cannock Chase Technical College, Rodbaston College and Tamworth and Litchfield. It was a strategic merger, no college was in trouble, no college was in financial difficulties, enrolments were good at all of the three colleges, but it was, it was a strategic move given what the three college boards saw coming rattling down the tracks, which we're actually experiencing now. I think what we got wrong was the speed of that change. <clears throat> We've got four main campuses that are located at Rodbaston, just outside of Penkridge and near Stafford got the Cannock campus, Tamworth and Litchfield campus, and <clears throat> some key facts and figures. The flashing bit is because Tina's with me, and she's my director of finance, sorry, my vice principal of finances and resources, and she insisted that I let you, everybody know that we're a category A financial status college, because that's important in your world, as it is in mine, of course. We're a around about £37 million turnover, depending on what date is. Uh, we employ around about 1,100 staff at the time of merger. That was over 1,500 staff. So you can see what's happened over the last couple of years. And we're not alone there. Um, over 20,000 students doing over 30,000 qualifications. General FE College, which incorporates land-based. Um, <coughs> but every, every, click, every Ofsted inspection area geographically dispersed and that's one of the reasons we wanted to use dashboard technology. Now there's two parts of this uh, for me. Um, one is to do with strategic management and the other one is to do with operational management. Destiny is a matter of choice not chance. Churchill claimed this in the Second World War. It was actually said way before Churchill by uh, William Bryan who's an American congressman years and years ago. Um, and that's something that we believe in, <coughs> in the college, and that is you actually choose where you end up. And last year, 2010, I was having a glass of wine, as one does, one evening, and I came up with this idea that we ought to have 2020 vision, which would be a 10-year strategic plan, within which single-year strategic plans operate and three-year strategic plans. We will review this, in 2015 and probably a little bit before then a little bit after as well but so we've got this 2020 vision and we've segmented our uh, strategic objectives into the segments that you can see there we want to be world class uh, there was a lot of debate about what does world class mean as you can imagine uh, 14 to 19 workforce development HE community and staff and we've got three principles that we operate within which we think will stand the test of time, where we expect the objectives to evolve over time, given different constraints and all the rest of it. But there's three principles that we, we don't believe in giving up. One is an ent entrepreneurial attitude, that is amongst staff and amongst learners, because enterprising staff do a good job, and enterprising learners get employed. <coughs> Excellence in learning and teaching, that's why we're in the job, that's what we're there to do and a world-class service culture, and that service culture is internally and externally with stakeholders. So that's a little bit about the context, but these things move on. And as we're moving towards 2020, those, those objectives and what have you might change. But in order to get us from where we are now to where we need to be in 2020, or indeed where we are now to where we need to be at the end of the three-year strategic plan, we actually need to do the um, <coughs> planning for business excellence. Now, this isn't rocket science, this isn't new. You will all have seen this displayed in some form or other. I just particularly chose this one, which is about planning, acting, implementation, monitoring, review, and reflecting. And you end up with this virtue of circle that 
enables you to deliver on your objectives, as everybody knows. But an important part of that is the, uh, the, the monitoring bit down the bottom. In order to do that effectively, what we wanted was, was a strategic scorecard. So we actually got involved in doing this, not because we saw a product and then so how, could we, how could we best use it, but actually we want to get from A to B what will help us get from A to B. And that's where the strategic scorecard came in. And you'll notice that that is not called a dashboard. And that, that is important. I'll come back to that in a minute. So hopefully the grand plan, if all this works, we get from A to B by good planning, which includes good monitoring, and hopefully all of the uh, aims and objectives as they evolve over time will, <coughs> will come to fruition and we will have achieved our 2020 vision. So that's the one side. That's about strategic management, about the general direction of the college where it's going in the future. The other side of, of, um, of the coin is the operational manage, uh, management. What gets measured gets done, though, I pretty much sign up to, and we are into performance management at the college, and, and this helps us in, in all sorts of ways. So why have we adopted this technology? We're living in a very fast-changing environment. You know, almost on a daily basis, there's some change coming into effect that's affecting us in terms of the curriculum we would want to deliver, the way we want to structure our finances, the partners we want to work with, or indeed those we don't no longer want to work with. It changes on a daily basis. I mean, this week, we're all waiting for the white paper on HE. Then all of a sudden, we'll all go running off chasing after all sorts of other balloons. Next week, it'll be another initiative or whatever, you know. And, that, and that's the world we live in. The, it, you know, the, only, the only constant is change, isn't it? So that's the, you know, and, and having information at your fingertips, at managers' fingertips, at the senior leadership's fingertips, is key in able to being able to deal with that. And real time is a massive, massive advantage. In other words, what's happening now? Not waiting for a report that people like Phil generate for us, when we ask for it, and it might take, you know, half a day or half an hour, or depending, it's real and, it, and it's live and it's now. What's happening now? On top of that, good leadership is about good communications and a common focus. Get the whole organisation pointing in the same direction, all signed up to the same values and the same behaviour and all of that stuff. Excellent for helping that. <coughs> but. The next bullet point down is also very important because I believe in paying my staff as much money as we can possibly afford. And in order to do that, you need to make sure that the staff are actually effectively deployed for as much time as possible. You know, the two things go in hand, hand in hand. You know, so, and that being able to monitor performance in staffing and monitor financings and monitor learner experiences is really, really important in, in terms of performance management without getting over bureaucratic about the whole thing. Because one of the downfall, one of the reasons it seems to me why colleges aren't that great at performance management is the amount of time and effort it actually takes to actually implement it. So we wanted to find a way of doing it succinctly that everybody understood, that could be seen, that wasn't threatening, was clear. Efficient use of managers' time, they need to know where the problems are as soon as possible so that they can react to them as soon as possible. It's not rocket science, it's simple. And I've got a senior leadership team, not a senior management team. That isn't semantics and it wasn't done by accident. I want my senior leadership team to lead. And if they are going to lead, they need to spend as little time as possible on the operational management and as much time as possible on the strategic management of the organisation. And... This technology enables us to do that. So when I first presented that, that looked like a load of balls, was the, was the comment. It's actually a traffic light system, but it doesn't show all of the traffic lights. It only shows the traffic light that's actually lit. And you can see that, and you, I'm, I'm sure Dynastics can give you a demonstration up, upstairs, which is far more glossy and magnificent than what this, this will be. But what we've got on here is, is our eight key drivers, if you like, 
And we are, we are currently, because this is new technology and we've been working with it now for about six months, uh, we, we are evolving this all the time. Um, <coughs> what these are, just for those of you who can't see it, and I can only just, you've got learner numbers on the top there, teaching and learning, um, stakeholder engagement, reputation, commercialization, finance, whatever. So basically, what happens in the morning when I get to my, my desk and I, and I fire up, this is the first thing I see. And this is the first thing that all the senior leadership team see. And it will be, as we roll this out, the first thing that all of the college leadership team get, all of the course leaders get, right the way through the organization. And the stuff they see on their dashboard will be the stuff that is relevant to them. So some examples. Even now, I am one of the very few principals, from talking to the principals that, that I talk to, who know live how many learners are enrolling on a day-by-day -day basis. On what course, at what level. And I know, I know instantly, I'm not waiting for a report, I'm not waiting for a, the first batch of registers to come in, I'm not sending managers running around desks counting them up or whatever we do or used to do. I know live, as soon as a learner gets put onto the system and they get put on at the point of enrolment, so we know exactly how many learners are being enrolled in all of the different categories. You don't need me to go through those, I'm sure. And we can then actually take action. Where are we like? Where have we got too many? Where do we need more teachers? Where do we need less? So all of those decisions start to happen as you go through the enrolment, not the week after or two weeks after. It's instant, and I know that live. <coughs> Finance. I've got a feeling this isn't real, because they're all green. Or amber. <coughs> but there's <coughs> the sort of <coughs> total turnover against plan, as if surplus as a percentage, you know, all of those things, the key, the, the key indicators that you'd want your finance directors and finance people to know. And then what's more, when this is live in the college, obviously this is just a you know presentation with a with a, with a screenshot. Below each one of those is a whole load of levels, so you can actually drill down to actually find out which account is going wrong. You know, right the way down to, to individual course level, if it's a curriculum or a quality thing, or individual accounts if it's a finance thing and so on and so forth, or individual buildings if it's an, est if it's an estates thing. Teaching and learning information. Where are we with lesson observations? Are we carrying out the lesson observations that we plan to do? Are we in front of or behind the schedule? What are the grades like? Are they getting towards the target or are we missing it by a country mile? Do we need to put any interventions in or not? You can imagine my quality director is sort of fixated on this. This is what they see first thing in the morning. And if I just go back, you'll see that square there is really important because that square there says I have noted all the relevant issues and taken appropriate action and I make sure I submit that every day because then when you actually talk to the individuals that are concerned so have you done this how many times are you told yes it's in hand it's sorted you know and what this actually gives you hard ammunition if you need it or certain information for real live discussions about, you've told me you've dealt with this. Why are we still here? So can you see the power of that in terms of performance management? So, <clears throat> why did we choose dynastics? Uh, to be blunt, they understood the vision of what I was trying, try, where I was trying to get to. They didn't try to sell me a product. I'm not remotely interested in the product, to be, to be honest. I don't know how it works. Phil does. I don't need to know how it works. I don't care how it works as long as it does work. A bit like my car. The only time I lift the bonnet is to put wind in the, uh, wind in the washers, water in the washers. You know, I don't care as long as it gets me to where I need to go. And it's the same with this. And, and Dynastics understood that. And we started talking to, to them about, I'm here. I want to be there. How can you help us get there? So they understood us. You've got excellent customer service. I've never, ever, in all the time I've been working, had any need to complain or, or raise an issue with them at all. Uh, <coughs> good implementation, good value for money. 
you know, some of you know Tina, trying to spend money in March. You know, when I buy a suit, I buy two pairs of trousers because the knees wear out. You know, it's just, it's good value for money. They know you all down here, don't they? <laughs> Uh, we did actually look at doing this internally. You know, there are other products on the market. You know, we could, we could you know, Phil and his team are very skilled. We could have done this internally. But why do it internally when, you can, when, I, when you've got a cost-effective solution that you can pull off the shelf and start using straight away? So we didn't do that. And obviously, we, we, we explored all sorts of external suppliers as part of the selection process, as you would expect. And Dynastics appeared to be the best, and they have proved faultless so far. But that's me talking, isn't it, as the principal. Now you're going to see Phil. This is where he gets really embarrassed, because if the technology works, I'll show you a little video clip, and you will know that it's Phil in a real-life situation. We chose Active Dashboards because the college needs it to move from strength to strength. We toyed with in-house solutions, but they proved not to be very cost effective, whereas the Active Dashboards that we have uh, pretty much off the shelf give us everything we need and more. The implementation process uh, was absolutely superb, it's one of the easiest I've ever known. Uh, we were up and running within a matter of hours. The Dynastics team actually give us superb support, they go well above and beyond our expectations. Um, the whole project has come to a very satisfactory conclusion. We've got very efficient reporting that's very easy to access for all members of staff and they can see information that's critical to their success and to the success of South Staffordshire College. Now you know that's Phil or at least somebody who works in MIS or finance because of the state of the office. Because I've never ever seen an MIS office or a finance office that was neat and tidy in my, in my working career. I'm going to show you in a second the deputy principal who's going to talk about uh, how we've rolled this out to all their college leadership team and, and all of staff. And eventually we will be taking this out to learners so that every individual learner can track their own progress against their own individual targets, all 20 odd thousand of them. That's, that's where we're going with this. I've already talked about it's on the computer when you log on, so you can't get around it without going through it. Um, and I talked about how we have to indicate that we dealt with the issues. So let's listen to what he's got to say. The fantastic thing that the introduction of the dashboard has given us is it's given us real-time live data which can be acted upon immediately. Colleges generate so much information and often there's a time delay between that information being generated as data and being turned into information that people can act on. People sometimes wait for monthly reports or quarterly reports or even annual assessments of where we are. What this gives us is it gives us an instant access to the key information. So it's completely eliminated the time delay that sometimes can lose the effect of the actions that need to be taken. The wonderful thing too that makes it a really effective tool for us is that it can be drilled right down. So you can start with a whole college level of performance, drill down through say a faculty to an individual's area of learning, to a course, and right down to individual learners. So you can see across an aggregated level of information that way where the successes lie and where the areas for improvement lie. So you can take instant action on the areas for improvement and deal with them before they become critical. You can see the best practice, identify what's making it the best practice and share that against, across the whole college without any time delay whatsoever. And that's what the dashboard's given us. Okay, so uh, Mark touched on, on a really important point there. I mean, colleges, my college, your college, are all the same. They are awash with data. You can get data on anything, anything that moves or doesn't. But what we're short of is information. And what the dashboard technology turns that data into information for those people who aren't, don't like looking through spreadsheets. It instantly tells you what's going on. It turns that data into in information, and Mark referred to that. So the benefits to our business. 
and I always stress that it is my job to run a business. It's the best business in the world. It's about futures, aspirations, hope, desires, ambitions. It's a great business, but we run a business. And this has got to stack up in terms of business. It enables us to focus on the real issues. What's going on today? Knowing what's going on today and being able to focus on it. It saves management time and money, which is really important because I believe in lean management structures. If you've got a lean management structure, your management teams need to, tools at their disposal and able to them to do the job effectively. Up-to-date information, I think, has been stressed enough, always on top of our finances, which we are. We are, we are proud to be a grade A category college, and however much a pull Tina's leg. This helps us to do that. Increase in accountability, I think that's obvious. You know, making people, you know, this is what we want you to do. These are the things what we want you to focus on. And this is what we'll be talking about at your appraisal. And if you've got any, any issues with that, come back and tell us. And people do come back and tell us. Once you start using this, the very first thing that happens is that staff say the data's not right, not right. Great. Well, let's put it right then. Let's put it right together because this is what we're going to be talking to you about. <clears throat> so uh, increase in accountability gives senior leadership time more time to think about strategic issues, those things that get crowded out because of, you know, the urgencies of the day. <clears throat> also, I think Vanessa's here. Wouldn't be right not to embarrass Vanessa. The dashboards are having a huge positive impact on the college. It's allowing us to focus on actual issues in real time rather than data collection and it's saving us management time and money. As soon as I log in in the morning the dashboard appears on my desktop. Um, because of its graphical layout I can then identify any issues that may have arisen. For example, if a key indicator turns from uh, green to amber I know there's an issue that I need to look at um, and the information is delivered directly to me. I don't have to go looking for it. Um, previously in finance we would have been reporting on month-end figures. Um, by the time we collated our key performance indicators they would have been 10 days out of date. With the dashboards the information is in real time and it's available immediately to take to the board. Uh, we're a financially strong college and the dashboards are helping us to maintain this and ensure that we're always on top of our finances. Okay, so I've talked about strategic management and operational management and you need to get, I believe anyway, you need to get that, both of those elements right and you've will, you will all seen this. It's about doing the right things and doing things right in terms of strategic and operational management. And that's where dynastics come in. It enables us to regular, regularly monitor the progress of the organisation towards that 2020 vision and it enables us to monitor live what's going on today at any, any minute through the day. And those two things lead to excellent operational and strategic management, which then lead you to your vision. Now, I talked about there's two, two there's a differentiation. There's a, a scorecard and there's the dashboard. They both use dashboard technology, but it's in, important to differentiate between the two. Because the last thing I need as a principal are, is the chair or board members focusing on this and phoning me up and asking me all sorts of things about all sorts of issues that I don't want to be dealing with on that day. So the way we deal with, with, it, with the board is to give them the scorecard. And that is a snapshot of the live data on the first of the month every month. And that is what they get access to, and that's what they, they get. We report by exception. We've moved away from those piles and piles of reports that boards get and don't read to exception reporting, because in the board meetings we look at this live, and they can drill down as far as they like through the scorecard. And the directors are all there to answer any of the questions about what's going on or what isn't going on or whatever. And if there's something going wrong, if there's something turned red, the issue will be identified, the actions identified to put it right and what the expected outcomes will be within the time frame. So you just deal with exception, but also giving the board the opportunity to actually drill down the good stuff as well, because it can do that live. So that's the scorecard. The dashboard is 
on this right hand side and that is the live monitoring which your directors and your course leaders and all the rest of it use. That's a very brief overview. All I'm here to say is, is really this is how we're using it and, we, and we've, we've got a very good deal with Dynastics and it works for us. Thanks ever so much for your time. You've been a great audience and I'll let you get to your tea and coffee. Thanks very much.